in a very simplified manner, you've been able to articulate a number of a number of uh, uh, items and issues in our in our in our minds. But obviously, this discussion has to go on. If you have questions, comments, I'm sure ICAP as well as Terabiz will be more than happy to facilitate those so that these this discussion can also continue. May we please have the memento for Dr. Ishrat? Please, sir, thoda aage aajega. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a very big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Next, I'd like to invite uh, somebody who is also a very profound speaker. We're very fortunate to have his, him uh, as a part of the conference today. Ray, the topic uh, the next speaker will be talking about is raising finance through capital markets and retail channels, a case example of Engro Rupia Certificate. The speaker is none other than the Vice President and CFO of Engro Corporation Limited, Mr. Rohail Mohammed. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Rohail Mohammed to the stage. Assalamu alaikum ji. Uh, my topic today is about uh, uh, the Engro Rupia Certificate, uh, which we thought was a unique concept uh, in the corporate debt market. Uh, it's a short presentation, about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll be happy to take any questions you may have on this. Okay, so as compared to uh, a number of other countries, whether it be uh, developing or developed countries, the corporate debt market in Pakistan uh, is at a, at a very low level. Uh, if you see the numbers which are in, in front of you, uh, the 5.1 trillion, which was mentioned in the morning, is the uh, bank deposits. Uh, the advances, which obviously come from uh, those deposits by the banking sector, about 3.5 trillion. Government securities, about 3.5 trillion as well. And then the NSS schemes and the government securities are the T bills, PIBs, etc. Uh, the NSS, you are all aware of. And versus that, the corporate debt market, which are normally referred to as the TFCs, is uh, a total of about 300 billion. So if you see the uh, potential avenues of investments for uh, whether it be a corporate or uh, whether it be retirement funds or individuals, is really if you total up the deposits, the government securities and NSS, that's almost 10 trillion rupees, although there's some double counting there, but uh, out of say 10 trillion rupees, the corporate debt market, which is also a, another avenue for investment, is just 300 billion. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of room for uh, increase there. Now, what was our objective? Uh, as we were growing uh, in uh, a number of projects, which you have probably heard about, I don't want to go into details here, uh, we required large sums of money. Uh, for example, we've invested about uh, $120 billion, uh, probably more, in the last three years or so in different uh, projects. And while the uh, main source has been uh, banks and off offshore financial institutions, uh, there was this particular source which was sort of, you could say, uh, untapped. Uh, also, as part of our uh, development activity, we tried to do something new. Uh, the, we wanted to develop the uh, domestic debt market as well, which is currently liquid. If you, just to recap, uh, the TFCs which started, I think, with uh, Tetra Pak, Milk, uh, Nestle some time ago, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, they hardly traded on the stock exchange. It was supposed to be a retail instrument, but it's actually traded between financial institutions only with the provident funds, pension funds, mutual funds, etc. So we couldn't find an example of a debt uh, product which was actually going into the retail uh, market as such. So if you and I as an investor or as a saver rather, uh, wanted to save money, uh, the typical sources of uh, those avenues would be either bank deposits, uh, very typical, or if you were slightly uh, wanted to put money for a slightly longer tenor, because bank deposits are mainly shorter tenors, time deposits, etc., uh, you would go to NSS, uh, which is very safe, and you would do a special, special savings certificate, which is for three years, or DSCs, etc., which are uh, longer. On the other hand, our, if you, uh, our objective was, as I uh, mentioned, was to develop a, a product range of short and long end products, which we could capitalize on, uh, on from this particular market. 
Uh, and if you see just across the border in India, uh, most of the larger corporates now, uh, and also in the developed countries, go straight to the uh, retail market to raise funds. They bypass the banks because a lot of their own ratings are actually higher than the bank's ratings as such. So it's easy for them to access funds directly from the retail market. And as I mentioned here in my presentation, uh, Indian companies like Tata Reliance, they do this quite frequently as such. So what we wanted to then look at a product which we could target at, and we came up with uh, the special savings certificate. And the reason is in front of you. Uh, out of the one trillion plus uh, NSS market, the special savings certificate is about one third of that. And more importantly, it is the most growing uh, segment of the NSS pool. So what we tried to do was that we tried to uh, look at the same target market, which means that we're trying to look at for those investors which three years is a good enough horizon, they don't want to go to 10 years, which is too long, or, or short-term deposits, which are really the bank's domain as such. Uh, and we try to replicate that product, which is you know three years and six-month payments, et cetera. So where did we, we, the, if you look at the rate, again, the rate was benchmarked to what if you go to uh, the special savings certificates, the rate at that time was 12 and a half, which changed to about 13.3 while we were doing the product. So obviously being a corporate, which is, and we are double A rated, our rate had to be higher than the uh, uh, SSC rate. So that's how we came up with the rate. Uh, we tried to add a few features uh, which we thought would make it more desirable for an investor uh, to invest and which was uh, convenience and I'll just touch upon that. So two key features was the rate which should be higher than SSCs and the other one was a convenience issue uh, because once you go to a uh, NSS uh, center you could spend literally hours there trying to get your profit payment or uh, make any investments as such. So what we tried to do if you look at the convenience features was that we uh, had banks and fund managers, about 15 of them, who were distributing the product. So they were available at all bank branches, at T TCS centers. We had uh, our call centers and our uh, website as well. So simply sitting at home, you could simply download a form, fill it out, call our call center, and he would come and collect the, the form and the uh, check from you. Alternately, even if you don't want to do that, just simply make a call We'll mail you the, the form, you just fill it out and, and uh, send the check along with it and we we'll collect it. So sitting at home, you would make the investment and more importantly, once you specify your uh, bank account number, the profit would get directly credited into the bank account. So, uh, so that's what convenience is all about. If you have any inquiry in terms of what the profit payment is, what tax has been, has been deducted, uh, just call us, out, send an email, and you'll get a reply. So that's where we got uh, encashment from. The other uh, part was the encashment. Uh, you see, if you, go, if you have an SSC, uh, you obviously you have to go for encashment. You have to go two or three times. Then you lose interest between the time you got the last profit payment. Uh, so if you went, say, two months after the last profit payment, you would lose interest for those, that period. We, what we said was from the day we return the money to you, you would get interest payments back. We would list it on the stock exchange, so you could trade it if you like. We have a market maker. Even if he doesn't make a two-way price, then you simply come to us and encash it. We can encash at any point in time. Obviously, there would be a, a, uh, a penalty because obviously if you're giving 14.5% for three years and you come in six months, you should get a slightly lower rate. Uh, so, how were the responses? Uh, we got a, a phenomenal response, we initially targeting two billion, and we had a green shoe of another two billion, so a total of four. The first amount of two billion was subscribed within the first month of uh, subscription. Uh, and here I must uh, uh, thank and acknowledge the efforts of uh, SECP and the stock exchanges, because this was a unique product. Normally IPOs have four, five days, two days for the IPO. We had a three-month window. Uh, we could actually with, withdraw the money every day as it came in rather than at the end of subscription period. So there are a lot of firsts as far as regulatory approvals were concerned. So a lot of uh, help from the, the regulators as well. Um, so, and most more importantly, 80% of this amount has come from individuals. We have about 2,400 individuals 
uh, investing in this. So we did a lot of product awareness. 